As part of my never-ending quest to increase my forestry knowledge, I decided to go around my property and identify all the trees I could. Unfortunately, many species of conifer can appear very similar to the untrained eye. Today, I discovered that the cones can be a very useful identification tool. I've collected seven conifer cones from my local area, and I would like to share what I learned about identifying them. This is obviously not a comprehensive guide, it's just the seven that I have to hand. We will start with the easiest and move up from there. The first is a hemlock cone. Hemlock is a slow-growing, shade-loving conifer. As you can see, the cone is very small. Its length is only about the width of my finger. I don't know of any others that are about this size. Next is the white spruce. The white spruce is a tall, long-lived evergreen prized for its lumber. The cones are again fairly unambiguous. They're about half a finger long and about a finger wide. The cones are quite light and delicate. The scales are very thin and papery. The next cone belongs to the Douglas fir. The Douglas fir is a west coast tree known for being the tallest growing tree and consequently the strongest softwood. They were never planted in great numbers in Ontario, so it's a little bit odd that I found one nearby. These cones can be easily identified by the distinctive leaf-like appendages sticking out from under the scales. As a side note, the Douglas fir is not really related to other firs. It's also known as the Douglas spruce and the Columbia pine. The scientific name translates as false hemlock. You'd think the scientists could have come up with their own name for it if codification is so important to them. Moving on, we enter an area where there is a little bit of room for confusion. This cone belongs to the red pine. The red pine shares a great many similarities and is often confused with the introduced Scots pine. As you can see, the cones are of similar size and shape, but they're easy to tell apart if you know what to look for. If you look at the scales of the red pine cone, you notice that the visible portions are shorter than they are wide and rounded at the tip. Comparing the scales of the Scots pine cone, we notice that the tips are pointier and the visible portions of the scales are longer, roughly diamond-shaped. Scots pine was extensively planted in South Ontario as part of reforestation efforts in the Dust Bowl of the 1920s. It has a low lifespan as a result of being generally unsuitable for the Canadian climate. This has led to an interesting situation of accelerated forest succession. With the next three, there is again room for confusion. Three cones of roughly similar size and shape. Again, the way to tell the difference is by looking at the scales. The cone on the right belongs to the white pine, the famous tree of peace. It can be distinguished from the others by the size of the scales. Each of these scales is about the width of my finger. The middle cone belongs to the Norway spruce. These were brought in as garden trees because they have attractive sweeping branches. The cones can be distinguished from the white pine by the size of their scales. Norway spruce are invasive north of 44, so you should cut them down where you can and avoid planting them at the very least. The left cone belongs to the blue spruce. These trees come from Colorado. They were brought in as garden trees because the needles have a bluish tinge. They're not invasive, but you probably shouldn't plant them anywhere that the seeds can escape into the wild. The tip of each scale is jagged and papery. All three of these cones are a little bit longer than the width of your palm. The Norway spruce cones can be quite a bit longer. Some Norways also have similarly shaped tips, and I'm not really good enough to give you any advice in that situation. In that case, don't use the cones as your sole identifying factor. So here you have it. How to identify seven conifers from their cones. I'm confident in six of these seven identifications. The blue spruce might be in Norway. Non-native either way. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.